Uh, we'll right. that advanced I left my hat in the car. We have, uh, there's a hat over there. There's a hat right there. Yeah. You can hand me. What's your phone? Yeah, here's a hat right here, too. <laughs> Where the fedora? Um, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> All right, we'll say our prayers here and get to rocking. This is Interspace Class 15, so we're going to, but as as uh, as always, whatever I'm kind of going over during the week, I'm going to interject a little bit of it. Um, and another thing we're going to do in this class today is uh, because we're in the because we're doing inner space right after the chapter on page 74 which is the chapter on Malchut it goes right into the shattering of the vessels and what I have figured out is this book is written backwards <laughs> what it should have done was start with the names of God and Ab Sagman Ben Mm -hmm. And then went to Akadim, and then went to Nekadim, mm -hmm. and then went to Beradim, and then went to Partsufim, and then went to the Spiro, mm -hmm. and ended in Malchut, but it doesn't. I remember Sutton, Sutton talked exactly about that. That was done on purpose. Now, what I can't remember is the reasoning for it. But he said this was, he, I remember him talking about the Kaplan, the genius of Kaplan, that he formulated this book that direction. But he had a, he did have a distinct purpose for it. Ah, I got you. Hello, Teresa. All right. Today we get to study Torah for the sake of heaven, for the sake of Israel and all of Jerusalem. We we'll have to give the merit of our study and the merit of our tour to Stephen King, Abraham Ben Moshe Gila, Ed Stribling, Linda Flora, Carl Lucario, Brendan Ross, Raymond Rosentrader, Brooke Gibson, Paul Navarro, Garrett Matlitz, Jordan Matlitz, the Patients of Texas Oncology, Rita Wilson, H. Ellen Betty Munkuski, Lola, daughter of Justin Lakeisha Neal. Faria One Staff, Felice Hagar, Nadine Freeman, Logan Willis, Billy Hope, Charles David, Rosa Honda, Christopher Durka, Noel Cardoza, David Douglas, Vicki McLean, Savannah, daughter of Matthew and Misty Katz, Tom and Karen Maitland, Sandra Hayes, Carol Tickle, Larry Langberg, Jill Navarez, Blake Highland, Leela Briscoe, Sam Peake, Yehuda Hay, Ben Matai, Leah, James London, David Jenkins, Jake Suarez, Bobby Williams Sr., Sally Talamantes, Rogers Family, Daniel Washington, Carol Scott, Rabbi Richman, Maurice Greenwood, Gracie Bell Linder, Randy Boots, Amanda Elliott, Frank Pollard, Carol's family, Baby Denard, Michelle Magnuson, Jenna Marie, Kimberly Brown, Debbie January, Kim Lively, Crespin Rodriguez, Sandra Hearth, Virgil Williams, Brad Mace, Josh Oliver Nickerson, Jerry Matlis, Dylan Tickle, Amber Merchant, Simka Ben Abraham and family, Celinda Sheffields, Luis Gutierrez and family, Aaron Price, Gail McWhorter, Sonia Kinzer, uh, Kathy Johns, John Michael Christopher Ramos, Jean Senajak Coach, Nellie Woolick, Tahila Abuelo, Miranda Rosas, Jim Barfield, uh, Naomi Botsimka, Terry King, Ronna Whitlow, Kathleen Graham Walsh, Brandon's family, Milo Rose, Monica Johnson, Ed and Dottie Garrison, Moshe Salavechek, Donna Marie, Farrar Sajid, Benson Ewing, Darlene Yautz, Debbie Henson, Anita Jones, Jessica Ross, Doug Eldridge, Bryant, Bryant Welch, uh, Phoebe Bridges, Salvador Gutierrez and family, Jacob Bensimka, Max Wagner, son of Marcy Wagner, Mark Matla, Jim Lebot, Tova, Jackie Cup, Neen, Bot, Miriam, Jack, uh, Carla Manzanares, Beth Carmen, uh, Alton Tillman, and Elvia Rosas. All right. Boom. All right. Interspace 14, ruler of the universe, master of all masters, father of mercy and forgiveness, or 15, rather. We, we, we thank you, our God and the God of our fathers, by bowing down and kneeling that you brought us closer to your Torah and your holy work, and that you enable us to take part in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us with such a big favor? That is the reason we plead before you that we'll, you will forgive and acquit all of our sins, and they should not bring separation between you and us. May it be your will before you, our God and the God of our fathers, that you will awaken our hearts to love and revere you. May you listen to our utterances and open our closed heart to the hidden studies of your Torah. And may our study be pleasant before your place of honor as a aroma of sweet incense. And may you emanate to us light from the source of our soul to all of our being. And may the sparks of your holy servants through which you revealed your wisdom to the world shine. And may their merit and merit of their fathers and merit of their Torah and holiness support us. So we shall not stumble through our study. And by their merit, enlighten our eyes in our learning as stated by King David, the sweet singer of Israel. Open my eyes so that I will see the wonders from your Torah. 
Because from his mouth, God gives wisdom and understanding. May the utterance of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor for you, God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. 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 Okay, y'all come on in. Come on in. If we need some more chairs, we'll grab them. Do we need some more chairs? Here's one right here. All right. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Today, we we have we have we are on. Uh, if you're following along in your book, we're on page seventy-four, an in inner space, with Malchut. Now, Malchut is the very bottom sphero. We have gone through every one of them, and it's the very bottom one. Now. It's the one that God's worried about the most. All right? So, whenever you're reading through the Torah, the Torah is a book of code. And, and it's always trying to work on that piece of code. So what are some of the names that are used in Torah instead of Malchut? Kingdom. Kingdom? Anybody? Huh? Vessel. Vessel? What else? How about daughter? That's right. How about house? Shekhinah. Shekhinah. Okay. How about land? Mm-hmm. How about earth? How about a bed? Mm-hmm. Uh, how about an altar? Mm-hmm. Okay. Anytime you hear and it says, and God said to build an altar, mm-hmm. what is he saying? Make a mahu. How about the biggest Malchut in the world? How about an ark? So whenever God says build an ark, ark is always Malchut. Noah built an ark. He is that is the Malchut. Uh, Moses had Betzael made an ark. Ark is the Malchut. So anytime he's talking about the land, the world, the house a daughter, a vessel, a queen, um, a kingdom, uh, an ark, an altar. Every one of those words in Torah refers to Malchut. It's always referring to that very thing. Okay? And the righteous man that does all this is called the tzaddik. Tzaddik means the righteous. And righteous is always referring to the sphero of Yesod that always does whatever it has to do to make the Malchut. Now, these are, now we, we don't really talk about those because those are the seven lower sphero, which is seven days of the week. And we get down here to six, seven. So, what is the main Malchut in the world? Shabbat. So Shabbat is a Malchut. All right. Now, what is if we say the sun and the moon? The moon is Malchut. The sun is Yesod, and it gives light to the moon. That's the Tzaddik. All right. So it's the ultimate receiver. It's the ultimate receiver. The woman, the womb, the vessel, the ark. Put the animals in the ark. Put the commandments in the ark. Put the animal sacrifice on the ark. On the altar. 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 You know? Put the Holy of Holies in the house. It's in the house. You know, everything. So that it's the ultimate receiver because what we have what we've been studying is here is how is God going to emanate his light and get it all the way down to the Malchut, where the Malchut can receive it. All right? And so, it, where as soon as this chapter's over, it goes straight into the shattering of the vessels. All right? Now, I'm going to go there just a little bit because we have to. Now, the, the, the vessel is a Malchut. So, what it's, what, like, like you said a while ago, so what, we're, what happens is, 
all the vessels are shattering. And what he's trying to, shattering is called death. Everything dies. It's shattering. Because it cannot contain God's light. It cannot hold it. So he's trying to make the filter system strong enough that everything he puts in it, it can receive it. And as soon as it figure, as soon as the vessel refigures figures out, it can contain it, and it can receive it. It must give it. It must give back. So, man into woman, woman gives forth a, a complete child. But it's more. But it's more than it ever received. Exactly. Yeah. And this and this is what God is is trying. This is. This is all of humanity. He's trying to create a, 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 he's trying to make a person be able to receive everything he can impart to him and the thing that that man gives back is more than he ever received. And this is called tzedakah or charity or any, anything like that, you know. And, and it, how does it come out in the Torah? So, if, if the six is the written Torah what do you think the seventh is? The oral. The seventh Malchut is the oral Torah. Without the oral Torah to receive the written Torah, then once the oral Torah receives the written Torah, then what comes out of the oral Torah is so much more than the written Torah. You see yeah. how it works? Yeah. You have one book that's a written Torah. Just the Zohar alone up here is 23 volumes. There's 73 volumes of Talmud. So you see how it multiplies the little thing that it's that it's been given. My poor wife, she has to, on top of our our chest of drawers, there's just solid Talmud stacked to the, to the deal. You know? Now, where we're headed is to the shattering of the vessels. Okay. The shattering of the vessels is found in Genesis 36. They call the kings of Edom. Why would they call them the kings of Edom if the vessel shattered? Because a king has to rule a kingdom. And kingdom is Malchut. And we know that's the female. So when it couldn't contain the light and it shattered... And this guy ruled and reigned and married so-and-so, and they died. And that's how the Torah teaches it in Genesis 36. These are the kings of Edom. Genesis 36 happens before Genesis 1, if you read it on what's called the Peshat level. On the Sod level, we know Genesis 1 is talking from Adam Kadmon before, Adam, before the Adam of the Garden anyway. And here's how. If we if, if we look at uh, let me look at this right quick because it's it's fixing to bring in um, we're fixing to have to talk about the shattering of the vessel so I, I'll go ahead and get into that because we're headed that way okay if you look on my chart here. If you look on my chart, this, this piece of chart right here is Genesis, Adam and Eve in the garden. Now, now there were 974 Genesis before this Genesis. And or we're going to call them creations. And, and this is the world that's right here on this board. This is called the world of Nekudim. And this is called the world of Akudim, where everything's together. This is where everything shatters. And this is where everything comes back together. We're going to call that the world of the part Sufim, where it comes back in parts. Mm -hmm. All right? So it was all unified, and then it was all fractured, and then it all comes together to create a new form. Right. All right? Now, in the world of Nekudim, this is the world of points. Akudim is bound, and Berudim is banded. And we're going to get into today, this is when, when Jacob went to Laban's house, 
he was working with the sheep, the spotted sheep, the banded sheep, and uh, the, bound, the, the, the solid sheep, yeah. okay? So that is Torah code for he's working in the world of Nekudim. But they tell it through the story of sheep. It has nothing to do with sheep. You see. So he is going back and he's working on the shattered vessels. He's working on all of the worlds that God ever created before he got to this one. Dinosaurs, yada, yada, yada. Everything that come and gone, 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 come and gone. All right? Because at the resurrection, it's all going to come back. Now, we know that Malchut is called a day. In all the prophecy, it talks about at the end of days. So this was the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day when Adam was made. Adam is the man, the tzaddik. Seventh day, he rested. This is called the end of days. So anytime you read in Daniel or any of the prophecies, in the end of days, he's talking about Malchut. He's not counting so he's just talking about he's talking about at this spot. And this is the sphero. You see the D right here? See, this was Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Aaron, Moses, Joseph, or Yosef. And this one's got a D in it. King David. King David's Mashiach. Although it's feminine, it's masculine. So what why was David the ultimate receiver? And the ultimate giver. David received everything God had for him. David would stay up all night and write psalms and then and then sing the rest of the night or study Torah and sing the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. He never did not receive. But what was his ultimate give? Why was he the ultimate giver? He gave his son the entire kingdom and the first temple. Mm -hmm. The ultimate giver. You see, so that's when you reach infinity with God because He is the ultimate giver. He can't do anything but give. And when when you reach that point, like David did, and you you are the ultimate giver, you, then you've reached an affinity with God. Yeah, and 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 He gave His Son the ultimate gift, which bound heaven and earth together. Hmm. All right. So that's a little bit about Malchut. Now, in the shattering of the vessels, as you know. We, as we've studied in here, there's always three columns, right, left, center, like Noah's sons, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. Always goes back to that. Now, when we have three columns, everything shattered at the eye, all right, in the world of Nekudim. So, what happens is this. When it shatters right here, and all, all these, we're going to call them sparks, fell out. They're called nitso, is in Hebrew. They manifest into three different columns. One is called the pardenim, is where we get the word paraduma or the red heifer. The red heifer atones for that. Okay? But this was Timna, the, the female Timna in, in the Torah. Okay? Now, the shock denim, or it can be shaka, which is a feminine word, 320 or 325. This is the Cushite woman that Moses married. And the Rapak, the 288 sparks, this was Potiphar's wife. So when these guys are working on the world of Nekudim, the shattering of the vessels of, of the 974 generations of creation, they're, they're working with these women. These women represent that coordinate. Okay? So, in... In, in Genesis 1, um, God said, let there, let there be light. Uh, that's, a, that's the Og Sogmon bin. And there was light. That's, that's the Rachel. Now, uh, it says that the, uh, and the earth uh, and divine presence hovered. The word there, Rapak, there's your 288. So in the first, in the second sentence of Genesis, is Rapak, Shach, and Par. That's where they get it from. All right. This is the this is the sharing of the vessels. Now, 
we're going to have to actually get a building. Yeah. Hey, Joe, turn the air down for us in, in here. So the reason I wanted to say that is this. We're having Passover coming up. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, we, we studied last week about Jethro and the mate, the staff. The mm -hmm. mate is Hebrew for the staff. And Memtet is Metatron. Okay? Which is the activating angel that does everything. Now, we see... In, in Torah, we see a thing called iteration. It, it, everything just keeps happening over and over and over again. So we see the splitting of the sea, right? This is the whole Passover coming out. Now, if, if we look in 2 Kings, right now I'm studying the translation of Elijah. And some of the questions I have was... Um, why did God take him? I mean, that's a pretty mm -hmm. that's a pretty good basic question. Why did God take him? The answer to that is Elijah wasn't for here and he couldn't stay any longer. He had to go. All right, that's basically the answer. All right. So there were three people that did not die. Enoch, Moses, basically, mm -hmm. and Elijah. Enoch we know is a cotrell or sandalf uh, or a cotrell. And we know Elijah is sandal farm. Mm -hmm. Now, Moses is in the middle. The Mem, the Metatron. He's in the middle. Okay? So listen to what this says. It says, uh, And as they were walking and con conversing, behold, a chariot, a chariot of fire and horses, and fire appeared and separated between the two of them. What is that? That's separation between 3D and 4D. Mm -hmm. Okay? Elijah ascended to heaven in a whirlwind, and Elijah was wa uh, Elisha was... Uh, watch, watching and shouting, Abba, Abba, Father, Father, Israel, chariots, and horsemen. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his garments and he rent it in two pieces. He picked up Elijah's mantle, which had fallen from him, and, and he returned and stood at the bank of the Jordan. And he took the mantle, which he had fallen from him, and he struck the water and said, Where is Hashem, the God of Elijah? He too struck the water and it split apart this way and that. Mm -hmm. You see the Red Sea with the staff and now with the mantle of Elijah, Elisha does this very same thing to the Jordan River. Splits it apart. Mm -hmm. Why does that happen? <clears throat> because mantle is the word aderet in Hebrew. A derrick is if you take the par and the shock and you add them together, it's the word a derrick. So what is he what what is his double mantle? He's working in the world of Nekudim once again. Alright. Now Ravali says that the mantle and the staff of Moses are the same thing. One's just a staff and one's just a mantle. All right? So, one of the questions that I hadn't ever had answered was, okay, Enoch is such a character, and but really all it says is, and God took him. Right? But Elijah, look at how much is expounded on because he's the Malchut. One's the catcher, one's the Malchut. And it's just expounded, 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 expounded. But where, and, and God took him, but where'd these guys come from? What's, what's their origin? Why was it those two that left? Why, why wasn't it about 25 guys that were worthy of that same deal? Because it's called Zahara Elah in Hebrew. What is that? We studied the souls. And if you look up here at the very top, somewhere maybe. Do I even have them on there? I don't know. I don't if you so. Maybe not. Alright. If we haven't gone through, let's go through. The, top, over here the top soul. The top soul is called. 
I don't even know if I got them anywhere. It don't matter. The top sole is called the Yahida. And then underneath that, everybody has five, five levels of the soul. And then you have what's called the Haya, and then the Neshama, and then the Ruach, and then the Nefesh. Okay? When Adam fell, the Haya and the Yahida fell out, basically. And so that's why everybody says, well, as high as you can get is Neshama. Because the Zahara Ila'ah is the Haya and the Yahida of Adam that fell. And who are these two? Who is it? The Yahida is Enoch and the Haya is Elijah. These are the two soul parts of Adam that fell out called the Zahara Ila'ah. That's why they were taken because that level of soul is so high, nobody ever reaches that. The only other person that reached the height of Yehida Russell is Moshe. That's right. That's why Moses did he die? Didn't did he die? Yeah. You see? Yeah, yeah. You see that? That's why that's in there. Did he die? Did he not die? All right, because he actually got that that high. For us in our day, if we can get to Ruach, we are really doing something good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I wanted to show, I wanted to show since we were going to work in the world of Nekudim coming up in this book, where it is in the Torah, in the mantle of Elijah, that he's working there. Of course, the book here goes into uh, Jacob with Laban and, and the sheep. All right. And Jacob is, uh, Jacob is Adam. And who is Laban? The Makash, the serpent. The evil one. And so what's he doing? He's going back in, fixing all the stuff that got broken. All right? Now, if you will, on page 74, I'm not going to sit there and read uh, about the traffic controller. But what we're going to see is uh, go down to the la uh, almost the last paragraph where it says, We can see, and go to the third sentence. We have seen that these six spherotes are associated with the Vav of the Tetragrammaton. Now, so I'm just going to take this off there for right now. So, if we have God's name, yud hey vav hey, it may be better if I point up here. But I don't have the tip of the yud up there. I'll probably wipe it off for now. <laughs> we'll put it. Yeah, it was right there. I saw where it was. Right there. Boop. Right there. Now, if we look up here, yud hey vav hey, Hashem, the name. Here's the Yud, here's the tip of the Yud, here's a hay, and here's the Vav, and here's the hay. Yud, hay, Vav, hay. So when it's talking about the Vav, it's talking about these six. You put a Vav in something, it makes it male. Okay? Hay is female. That's being Rachel. The upper female is Leah. So, right here in the text, we've seen that the six wrote are the Vav of the Tetragrammaton. The Vav is the idea of forming a connection and giving. In essence, the first triad represents the initial reaching out to give, and the giving, however, is too, too powerful to receive. So it goes lower to a to, to lower filter system. It is only the second triad that's the concept of giving brought into perfection as it needs to be to the receiver, which is through your soul. Altogether, then, we have the six elements of the idea of giving. These are the six days of creation. God was creating to give. All right? We now bring in the last hay of the Tetragrammaton, which is the Malchut or the kingship. We have the idea of now receiving. It is the idea of being the uh, keli, or the vessel. Malchut is the power that God gives us to receive from him. Furthermore, it is in this Malchut 
that the purpose of giving is realized in a relationship where one receives can also reciprocate and become a giver. And I gave you all some examples of that. It is for this reason that Malchut is seen as a feminine sephira. On one hand, it's the ultimate vessel that was created to hold God's light. It represents the epitome of receiving and therefore is characterized as a sphero that has nothing of his own. How do we, where do, where does God show us that in natural world? The moon. All of the feast of God are go by the moon. All right? So the moon is dark. It has nothing of its own. Only when the sun shines on the light, shines the light on the moon, does the moon have anything. All right? And so all of the feast go by the moon. Every animal in creation cycles on the moon face. Every animal. You can, you can breed horses, cows, deer. It doesn't matter. It's going to happen on a moon face because all of creation is run by that. The tides are run by that. Migrations of birds, geese, sandhill cranes, it doesn't matter. It all runs off the moon. All right? Circumcisions, blood, you bleed differently on a full moon than you do on a new moon. Everything in this world is actually governed by the moon, not the sun. Because it is the sun that gives to the moon. And then the moon gives back. All right? So go, go, to, go to the ER on a full moon and see what happens. It's busy, 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 busy. Okay? Now, so this is what it's talking about. It has nothing of its own. So everything God has been trying to put love and strength and empathy and balance and all these things to to get everything to where he could give it because if it just went straight through like it like like it had to start out it would explode we call that the big bang theory all right science and torah line up and that was 18 billion years ago about 974 generations you can calculate it it's the same number all right so after 974 generations we get to the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai, which is the whole Passover deal. So, from Adam to Abraham to Noah to Abraham, from, from Adam to Noah, ten generations. One part Suf. From Noah to Moses, ten generations. Uh, uh, to Abraham, ten generations. From Abraham to Moses, Six generations. Twenty-six. What do we know about twenty-six? Yud, hey, vav, hey equals twenty-six. So, nine hundred and seventy-four plus twenty-six equals a thousand. One and a thousand. One, ten, hundred, thousand. So, when you're reading in Torah and these people were living 900 years old or 930 years old like Adam did, where's Adam at? He's up here. He's in a world so high that the numbers and the ages tell you where they are. And Noah was 600 years old when he entered the ark. He's in the world of Berea. You know? <laughs> and those that lived in the in the, in the, in the hundreds they're in the world of Yitzira and those that lived in the world of the ones and the 70, 60, 50, 40 they're in the world of Asiya so you can pretty much tell so if God's working in the level of Atzilu in the world of a thousands we have a day is a thousand years to God we have six days of creation and we're running on six thousand years of Torah down here so it all lines up and so from the time he emanated the first emanation to the giving of the Torah was a thousand generations. Mm -hmm. All right? And 974 of those were, were, came and went. But I would, I would beg to say that it was uh, 984 because 10 generations after Noah, what did God do? 
he destroyed the earth. He destroyed everything on the earth. That's creating and destroying worlds. And he recreated creation at Noah. See? So, let's get back into Malchut here. On the other hand, Malchut represents the power that ultimately unifies all diverse powers of the Sphero and holds to everything together. Without Malchut, creation would remain incomplete. When we examine the difference between giving and receiving, male and female, we can see the paradigm that male is more diversified, where the paradigm of a woman is more unifying. This becomes evident in Sefer Yitzra. Uh, the six days of the work week are male, the six directions going outward, and on Shabbat, on the other hand, it's female. What do we do? We welcome in the Sabbath queen, welcome in the the Holy Spirit, or the Ruach, right? It's female. It's called, it, and then on Havdalah, it, it, the meal after Havdalah is called, in English, it's called the queen's escort. You're es like, like a knight would escort a queen down through the city. That's, after, that's the little meal after Havdalah. The Sabbath, on the other hand, is female. It's the center point that draws all six points together. So back to our Simpson, our Simpson. As we said, as we said, if this, if, if the outer green one was Keter and the inner green one is Malchut, as God contracts, all the Malchuts come together and make creation or what we're gonna call Earth. So then, this is all female, and this is how he's getting everything into compression, only to have enough force to blow back out even beyond itself, which is the world to come. It's all about the Malchuts. Another important idea is the female principle is that all week long, uh, in our struggle to gain spirituality, we're on the male level. On Shabbat, though, the female level it's on the female level becomes, uh, because it can absorb the fruits that all you've done all week. There's a vessel to contain all your labor. Then it all comes together. A person could work very spiritually hard all week, but without Shabbat, there would be no way to receive it. This is because Shabbat is like the final hay of the Tetragrammaton. You're completing God when you're doing that. Completing His name making unification to his name you know so people try to get holy and holy and holy and holy and if you're not doing shabbat you'll never you'll never get there because you're not making unification of the name and um what's the difference between a, a, a b'nai noach and, and a ger and a ger or ger toshav or ger tzedek or anything like that unification of the name that's the secret so let's see this is because Shabbat is like the final hay. It is the hand that receives. <laughs> Without Shabbat, therefore, it's like cutting a person's hands off, preventing him from receiving anything. It is like working for something and never receiving it. This is why Shabbat is such an important part of Judaism. If you think of male and female biologically as male is the giver and female is the receiver and the nurturer, that gives much more than man ever initiated. Like <clears throat> the man gives over a million sperm cells from which a woman selects only one. From that one single fertilized egg, however, she gives back a complete person. She receives, but as a part of the receiving, she ends up creating and building something more complex. Hence, the essence of femininity turns out to be much more complex. If masculinity is giving, femininity is receiving and completing. What is completing? The world of uh, uh, yet, uh, yes, oh. Completion. Completion. Berea, Yetzira. Oh, I see it. I see it. That's right. Berea is the world of creation, and God created, and He formed man. Formed is Yetzira, and He completed it, which is Asiya. Those are the three worlds that we live in. Well, we live in Asiya, but those those are the three worlds that everything fell through. All right. Whereas masculinity is masculinity is much more 
Yitzira, which is something from something. Femininity is Malchut paralleling Asiya, which is completion. And God completed the work which he had done in creating it, which you say every Shabbat, and he rested on the seventh day, because he had completed the work which he had done in creating it, Asiya. He's all about right here. What is the very thing that God's thinking of right now? Earth and everything in it. It's in the center of his thought. And speaking about Chokmah and Bina, we mentioned in the verse, God founded God founded the earth with wisdom, Chokmah, and established the heavens with Bina. Now, this <clears throat> doesn't make a whole lot of sense because he talks about earth before he talks about heaven. See, look at it. God founded the earth with wisdom and established the heavens with, with understanding or bina. All right? Kabbalists point out the feminine principle is earth. It's rooted in Hokmah, whereas the masculine derives from bina. So how do we say that in, in other poor terms? Hokmah, this is father, mother. Father is the foundation of the daughter, and the mother crowns her son. So, where do we see that? King Solomon. Uh, King Solomon was crowned by his mother, and she ruled with him in the Holy of Holies, because that's her space. And. Hashem, Hokmah, the male, is worried about his daughter. What's his daughter's name? Rachel. Rachel, the Shekhinah, which is nothing more, and Rachel is crying for her children. Who is he? So what was God thinking about when he created everything? Israel. The land of Israel. The people of Israel. It's all about Israel. That's the apple of his, that's literally called the apple of his eye. Why? Because the black part in your eye is the Malchut. That's the apple of your eye. It has no color of its own. Everybody, I don't care what color your eyes are, the very center of your eye is black. It has nothing of its own. And God, that's called the apple of his eye. Which is Israel. His firstborn. Yeah. So that's why that's how that works. Um, now, if you'll go down on page seventy-six, about three quarters of the way, it, on the paragraph says, "As we have said, the purpose of the of the spherot is to conceal God's light. It's really not concealing it; it's just restraining it. You know, <clears throat> enough so that he can so that." so that it can benefit those who have received it. In a sense, the Mahu kingship represents the ultimate concealment of the divine purpose for interacting with creation. In Mahu, God constricts himself. He constricts himself. Constricts himself in order to give the kingdom over to man. He is essentially saying, I have created the world in such a way and now it's all up to you and I've given you the keys. Last paragraph. Rabbi Nachman is teaching us that Malchut kingship is not just a vessel that receives. As we have said, in order for Malchut to be perfect, it must also give what it receives. The receiving must transform into the giver. A great example of this is Noah's Ark. Never said it was a boat. Said it was an ark. If you know what an ark is, then you don't get trapped in the sugia of, well, how do you get all the animals on the boat? Well, what do you feed all the animals? You know? They do nothing. Well, yeah. Well, what do you do with all the poop? You know? How do you feed them all? Well, why do you put a why do you put a door in the side of a boat that water's coming? And how in the world if 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 evaporation works and you can only evaporate so much water in the sea, where'd all the water come from? We got 14,000 feet 
peak cliffs up, up here, uh, mountains up here in Colorado. So we had to have 14,000 foot of water to go all around the earth. And, and people just go off in that. Oh, you just got to believe it by faith, brother. No, you don't. You got to know what an ark is. <laughs> and then it's pretty simple. In terms of kingdom, for example, Malchut could be represented in the people's acceptance of the king's sovereignty. They're receiving all their needs from the king. And they're totally dependent on whatever the king provides. Second paragraph. If the king wants a subject to interact with him, however, then he must give them the ability to govern themselves. We call it free choice. Thus they become partners in directing the kingdom. They become givers as well as receivers. The concept of a king giving to his son a kingdom during his lifetime is paralleled by King David who gave the throne to his son Solomon. As we have seen, King David represents the perfection of Malchut. David is a person taking Malchut the kingdom, taking little by little authority that, that was given to him, bringing it into a full gestation and pregnancy with full-fledged power and giving it over to his son. Now, turn the page. The Shattering of the Vessels. How much time we got? How much time we got? Uh, 15 minutes. All right, we'll go, we'll go about 15 minutes here. Chapter 10, 78. If we had discussed the 10th road of Atsilu, <clears throat> I better go over that. So, At first, they were just ten, ten sphero, okay? But they were all bound together. Okay, something bigger. Okay, so we're going to do this. Here's what happens. Ab, Sag, Ma, and Ben. Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. So Ben's the Malchut, like we've been talking. Ma is the six, Hokma Bina, 72 name of God, the very name of God that Moses used to split the Red Sea, he used the 72 name of God. 63 name, 45 name, what's the 45 name? Adam. Adam. <laughs> ben is 52, Adonai. So I would say Barukata Adonai. <laughs> How many weeks are in a year? That's one. Now, these are the two Hayes, the two girls, Rachel and Leah. As the light comes down into the world of Akadim through Sog and Ben, it's got it's working on its he's trying to create. So we use Elohim. Elohim is the creative name. It it shatters. On what day does it shatter? The ninth of all. The ninth of Av. Everything that has ever happened bad to Israel, ever, has always happened on the ninth of Av. Why? Because it's a reiteration of Because that. it's an iteration of never not. When did the first temple? When did the second temple? The ninth of Av. When do you think anything that's ever going to happen, Gog and Magog, is going to happen? It's probably going to be the ninth of Av. It's never not been the ninth of off for 18 billion years. So, the ninth of off is the shattering of the vessels. And uh, Rosh Hashanah is the creation of Baradim. He took him 10 days. Right? We have 10 days to Yom Kippur. So, what happens? These are the 10 days to Yom Kippur till we get to the Malchut. Then it's about her. Then there's no eating, no drinking, no bathing, no sex, no nothing down here because it's all about her up there. This is, this is when Adam and Eve were separated. When he took, what, what did he take off of Adam? The Malchut. What's her name? Eve. All right, that's the rib. That's the surgery. We put Adam to sleep. 
and then he wakes him up and they 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 hug and kiss these are the these are the 22 days of awe and ecstasy Sfirot Yom Kippur the hugging and kissing he builds her a house it's called a sukkah and they love each other very intimately, and then boom, Simcha Torah, brand new everything. The feast are traveling in it, but it had to go through the ninth of Av to get there, the shattering of the vessels. All right. So even our feast days that we have here are paralleling exactly what's been going on for never not in the mind of God. And so every time we do them, even every Shabbat that we do is repairing never not for God. That's the whole point of creation. He, there's so much power there, it's, it's, it's nuclear explosion. And we got to put the pieces of the puzzle back together. Now, when, when this happens right here in, in the world of Nekudim, then then all of Berudim is, is uh, the reconstitution. So, if you look in, in your, in your uh, book here, if you don't have it, I'm going to jump a little bit to page 80. And, and we'll go back through and read that, but I want to jump to page 80. Because page 80 here is Genesis 36. And these are the kings that ruled in the land of Eden before any king reigned over the children of Israel. And I did a huge teaching on this six or seven years ago and mapped out each one of these guys for each of the Sphero. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. Mm -hmm. All right. But I want you to look at the bottom. And he was succeeded by Hadar, who became king. Hadar, Hadar's wife was Mahetavel. Hadar is Adam and Mahetavel mm -hmm. is Hava. Ravali says this is none other than Solomon and Bithia. All right? Which is just the iteration of the whole, whole thing. Okay? So we can see that when, and that's the eighth king. So we have the seven lower sphero shatter. When he makes the eighth, that's Baradim. He's already finished the world, the, the, the completion of it. In God's mind, in God's mind, it's we're just running the formula. It's already there. It's already done. The entire world of Baradim is already fixed. It's already banded back together. That's because it can contain the light. So it can contain the light. So everybody worked on it. Joseph worked on it with Potiphar's wife. Moses worked on it with the Cushite woman. They wouldn't dare touch Timna because that's Amalek. Amalek's Haman. We just went through that with Purim. Adam and Hava have been working on the rest and every iteration that has come out of it mm -hmm. from never, ever not. And we are just a result of the ones that are bringing up the rear, patching it up. And so this is, this is, this is the shattering of the vessels and, and what, what happens with that is why the world looks the way it does today. Because Adam... Is Rome. Mm -hmm. Edom is all of Rome and every iteration that's ever come out of Rome. Europe and America. That's the Western society. It's the Western society that shatters. You look at it over history. They're still using their calendar. Well, you know, all the wrong one, boom. This Alexander comes up, boom. You know, France, Italy, Germany, look at it. Mm -hmm. Rise and falls, rise and falls. We're fixing to fall. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a never not deal. Mm -hmm. we're, we're on the verge of it. It's a kink knot. Because we never try to hold the light. We're going to get, we're going to get, we're going to get the Ten Commandments off the courthouse. We're going to get prayer out of school. We're going to, we're going to make sure there ain't no God in America. Mm -hmm. You know, and as soon as we do that, and, and, and as soon as we do that, we just 
we, we're not going to contain the light. They're, he's not going to give any. The golden cup falls. That's it. Mm -hmm. You look at China. Those, that, that, China's, that dynasty's been around for 2,000 years. They ain't, they, they, you know? Yeah. Now, they got their own deal, but they aren't the root of Adam. That's right. the thing. Mm -hmm. That's which the thing. Is Esau, which, which is Esau. Which is Esau. Which is the whole, which is the whole issue that we have, okay? So, back to uh, back to page seventy-eight. Um, I'm not going to talk about. Uh, we've already talked about most of that page, but go to the middle of the page. The way in which Jacob succeeded in increasing the flock was obviously miraculous. Now, <clears throat> this in turn was based upon a prophetic vision in which the angel appeared to Jacob and said to him, Raise your eyes, and you will see that the bucks manning the sheep are banded, spotted, and streaked. This is Genesis 30, 31, 12. As a result, Jacob learned that he was to meditate on these rods while in a very high state of consciousness, thereby projecting his thoughts on, what, on the sheep being conceived. All right. So, can we do that? So if you get in a, in a meditative, it's all code, get in a meditative uh, prayer and start working on four-dimensionality, and you're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, you can say, I was counting Coke cans. I don't care what you call it. Mm -hmm. You can only say what it is here because there's nothing that, you know, yeah. how are you going to describe the world of Akudim? All right. Now, the Ari states that when Jacob saw the vision, he was looking at the very beginning of creation of the Sphero. That's what he was doing. Who's the Ari? The Ari is all, is all the, the whole Kabbalistic um, math. He knows. He was, he was looking at the creation of the Sphero, which means he was really back in... Akudin, because that's the bound. So that's the that's that's the stick he was. That's the rod he was using. Mm -hmm. That's the bound. Mm -hmm. All right. To meditate on the spiritual spiritual dimension that underlies the physical reality. So he was looking at physical reality, but he was he was looking at the spirituality of the physicality, which nobody hardly does anymore. They just see it as cheap. He was <laughs> saying, "Oh, but." Oh, okay. Maybe I reconnected. Um, thereby in influencing the genetic structure of the sheep. So he he was actually changing the genetics. Why? Because he was working on the genetic code. The guy's a scientist. He was in the laboratory of the mind of God. And envisioning the three major stages of evolution of the Sphero. By meditating on the latter, he succeeded in changing the former. He was changing 974 worlds. That's the depth that Jacob was working on. What Jacob saw was that the Sphero were, were first created. They existed as a paradoxical ten lights within one vessel. The world of the bandit, Akudim. They were all the sphero that are completely undifferentiated and bound together. The next, the lights were divided into ten distinct entities in the state of Nekudim, of spots and points. This state is where the primitive sphero could receive God light, and thus they were called vessels. But they could not interact or, or give anything to each other. The vessels could not communicate. Instead, the light overwhelmed them and they shattered. This is known as the breaking of the vessels. After being shattered, the vessels were then rectified and rebuilt. This is the world of Berudim, or as they say, Berudim, but we call it Berudim. <laughs> <laughs> Berudim, where the Sphero were connected as a part Sufim. Part Sufim. Archetypes, personas, love, mercy, strength, Empathy, see it. In other words, God's God now has a personality. He can actually interact as judge, as savior. You see, as and God was angry. <laughs> you know, he can he he 
and he can have emotion. You know, this is what he's doing. These are his personas, personifications. He can act as father. He can act as mother. He can act as deliverer. He can he can be the death angel. He can send the death angel. He can do whatever he, he can now interact and it can communicate with itself without being just overbearing light. This is called part Sufi. It has parts. Okay? This is the world of Baradim, where, where it can be constructed into part Sufi. Second to the last paragraph. As we saw in the discussion of the spherot, any creative act requires all ten spherots acting in unison. In essence, all the spherot are vessels of Keter. In other words, Keter is feeding them all. They constitute the unified system through which light of Keter manifests itself. When we go up a level, however, we see the spherot are all there originating one single vessel. This is the level of Akudin. So, the level of Akudin comes from Adam Kadmon. So we have Adam Kadmon, and then the Adam of Berudin is Adam Harishon, is the Adam in the garden. Now, when it falls out and it's contaminated with the fall, it's Adam Blia all. So there's three Adams. A pre, a, a present, and a, and a post, we'll call it. All right? So the serpent, the Nakash, is basically Blia, Adam Blia all. A contaminated Adam. So you when you say it's like post, you mean post fall? Post fall, yeah. Yeah, post fall. Yeah, yeah exactly. All right, this is in preparation for the next stage in the process that leads to the unity and similarity to diffuse and, and the similarities. The 10 and 1 uh, situation is now forcibly dissolved. Each wrote manifest independently, and the next stage is Nekudim. We'll wrap it up right here. We'll just wrap, we'll just wrap it up right there. Top of page 80. It's a good place to start. Real quick, let's let's read the first paragraph. It is here that the spherot appear in ten distinct concepts. They are called nekudim points because they are primitive state. They are totally disconnected. The force to diffuse is so great that the spherots are now called the universe of tohu and chaos. Tohu and chaos. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was astonishingly empty and darkness upon the face of the deep. Which one of those words is tohu? I think it's, a, I think, the, I think uh, tohu is, uh, I think tohu is astonishingly empty. Tohu, bohu, there's four there's four words there, tohu and bohu. But anyway, that that's now we're finally at Genesis chapter one. See? Can you can you find it, Russell? Which, 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 which one? I'm having trouble finding a page. Uh, Genesis one one. Much less uh, it's it's either it's I'll look for it. it's tohu, bohu. I think it's, it's astonishingly empty. That's, yeah. And then... Uh, the bohu is darkness, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, chaos. astonishingly empty. Chaos. What now? Chaos. Chaos. That's right. It's chaos. Chaos. Chaos is tohu. So we just got there. So we will start with tohu next week. So we finally got into the book of Genesis. So far. All right. So the Torah is amazing, sages are amazing, and and uh, next week I, I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna do a do a little Talmud piece. It's real short. 
but I'm going to do a Talmud piece next week. It's really cool. I'll show you how the Talmud, you know, I love doing Talmud anyway. So we're going to do that, and maybe we'll, we'll do some more of this, but uh, I'll get really back rolling next week. Tour is amazing. Sage is amazing. See you next week. You did it? <laughs> I, I thought I heard it beep.